Hi, thank you for joining me today. My name is Terry Kim. I'm Sales Director of Tanya Fiber Optics. Today, I'd like to talk about the FTTH and the 5G market trend in South Korea. Most of the countries are suffering with COVID-19 and also the internet environment has been changed a lot because of the COVID-19. Data demand is massively increased by remote work and video streaming and virtual conference and etc. So we trace the data traffic of the major web providers such as Facebook and Netflix and YouTube. You can see all three provider data traffic lamped up since COVID-19 pandemic. For example, YouTube, they provide service by the lower the quality of the video from HD to SD since March of this year. In these circumstances, investments are expected to be increased to improve network quality to cover the data traffic. Under the COVID-19, Korea broadband services are very stable. Korea is able to provide high-speed mobile and the fixed broadband internet service even under the COVID-19 pandemic. As it has started investing in wire and wireless network in early stages. The average broadband speed in South Korea is two times faster than world averages. Mobile speed is even greater. The average mobile speed in South Korea is almost four times faster than world averages. This slide shows FTTH penetration and the 5G progress in Korea. In FTTH, we are ranked on the fifth over the world, and we are ranked on the first in the 5G progress. In the 5G progress, Korea is providing the world's most advanced 5G service all across the field of the spectrum and launch, coverage, takeoff, and ecosystem. Because of the high-speed network infrastructures, HFC and XDSL subscribers are replaced by the FTTH and B, Numbers of subscribers are keep increasing. Now we have uh, like uh, 22 million householders, which is 80% uh, of the total subscribers. Reason why we could have a, such a high speed of the internet is Korea launched FTTH phone service year of the 2004. And from the 2014, we started a one gigabyte service and from the 2018, we could have a 10 gigabyte service in Korea. Nowadays, Korea internet speed is up to 10 gigabytes, which is uh, 10 times faster than middle of the 2010. We also need to look at the pawn development in Korea. Korea firstly established the ePON in 2004 with 2.5 gigabytes with 32 channels. Now we are enjoying 10 gigabytes pawn service with 128 third channels, but the Korea carriers already doing the pilot project for TWDM Pawn, which is a 40 gigabyte service with the 256 channels. We are expecting the more high speed of internet in the near future with the TWDM Pawn. For the FTTH network, we have a two obvious trends for optical fiber and fiber optic cables. For optical fiber, we need a strong BIF fiber. Our Korean carriers are using 657A1 fiber for the feeder, and that they are using the B3 fibers for last mic applications. And also count optical cables are needed for FTTH and fixed band, fixed broadband network. From the, this slide, we would like to introduce three different products which Korean carriers are using for FTTH. One is a pre-insulated subduct cables, which is very popular for FTTH. With this pre-insulated subduct cables, carriers can reduce the cost of the insulation process and as well as construction time. This is another product for FTTH, which Korean carriers are using for area insulation. We call the pre-terminated area cables for access. Our conventional drop cable insulation is one core from the port to the axis, but with this solution, we can install up to six access points with a single cables. The last one is a pre-connectedized cable for old apartment. Most of the old apartment doesn't have the duct inside of the building. With this solution, we just need to install the one single cable out the wall because of these cables already branching out for each floor. 
We developed this solution with the Korean carriers, and this is the one of the popular last mile solution for FTTH. From this page, I'd like to talk about the 5G progress in Korea. We demonstrated 5G pilot service in the PyeongChang Winter Olympic Games in 2018. It was the world's first Olympic using the 5G technology. The, for example, there was a self-driving buses and drone shows, active antennas, etc. And later, April 2019, Korea launched world's first commercial 5G services. This is the 5G coverage map in South Korea by Korean Telecom. As you can see the figure, network coverage in Korea is not dense enough. 5G is built in the mainly densely populated area marked in the red. However, compared to 4G network map on the left side, the number of the 5G base station is quite low. So we are expecting more base station and infrastructure will be needed in the future. The number of 5G subscribers are keep increasing. Now the total number of the 5G subscriber is 9.2 million. It is almost 13% of the total mobile subscribers. This 13% of the 5G subscribers are using 34% of the data traffic. The reason is 5G subscribers are using 26 gigabytes while the 4G subscribers are using 10 gigabytes. It is 260% higher than 4G subscribers. According to this data, the number of 5G subscribers will increase as more data demand is expected in the future. This is current statute of the Y and wireless network in Korea. The first step of the non-standalone 5G network in Korea is installing box on the existing LTE network. So far, we have 132,000 5G base station, but this number is quite less than 4G base station numbers. So we might need a 5G base station in the near future to cover the inbuilding and rural area, and also small cells will be installed to cover many shadow areas. Additionally, Korean carriers are rolling out joint construction plan to integrate wire and wireless network in rural area, as well as island. And this will speed up the 5G coverage in Korea. From the, this slide, we would like to introduce the typical cables which we are providing to the Korean carriers for 5G connectivities. For 5G base station, we are providing the CPR, C3 cables with the optical fiber and alarm cables with SFTP and the power cables and hybrid cables for power and ground. C3 is connected from the MOX to the AAU and the alarm and power cable is connected from the electrifier to the AAU. And the hybrid cable is combined with the CPRI and the power cables. For inbuilding 5G connectivities, we are providing hybrid cables such as a fiber with the UTP and the fiber with the power. Especially, we are delivering better cloud hybrid cables that are most cost effective because uh, we don't require the installing the separate duct or pipes. The last one is a solution for subway and tunnel base stations. For this solution, we are delivering metal cloud flexible hybrid cables and metal cloud hybrid cables. As like in building, tunnel and, high, tunnel and subway also require the hybrid cables. In the past, with the 4 g installation, Korean carriers installed with the hybrid cables into the steel pipe. But nowadays, all carriers are using the hybrid cables with a metal cloud jacket in order to reduce the cost and the installation process. Future prospects, Korean government and TECO have announced the 5G development plan. Korean carriers will invest 22 billion for wire and wireless network by the 2022. And also from the Korean New Deal, 5G service will be available for 45 highways and all subways and train stations. And 85 small and medium-sized cities and public facilities will be covered by the 5G. And all this action will accelerate Korean 5G network. This is the last page of my presentation. Let me briefly introduce about the Taiyan Fiber Optics. Taiyan Fiber Optics has been in the optical communication field for more than 40 years. 
and we maintain long-term relationship with uh, more than 250 customers in over 50 countries. We are providing various products from the uh, core glass prepon to the optical cable and turnkey engineering service. We also providing specialty fiber for laser and medical applications and also synthetic parts product. We always looking forward to collaborating with the uh, overseas carriers, friend and fiber optic field. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Okay, so uh, first of all, thank you very much for sharing the uh, valuable opportunity to us. So yeah, let us introduce ourselves. Uh, beside me is uh, Terry Kim. He's the presenter of this presentation. And uh, my name is uh, H5 Bao. I'm CEO of Daihan. Yeah. So we, I think we successfully done the presentation after some technical trouble, however. Uh, so if there's any the questions on the Korean 5G or FTTH network or the, the required cables, which applied for the 5G network. So we are ready to listen and answer. Yeah. Okay, in case of, well, yeah, there is one question about the 5G prompt hall system. Uh, frankly speaking, we are not very specialist on the uh, 5G equipment, yeah? but in case of uh, 5G prompt hall equipment, Korea, Korea is using non-standing law uh, system so far. And then in case of transmission, uh, Mostly they are using the double the uh, phone network, uh, but uh, nowadays they started uh, to use WDM phone. So we can say that's not active. Yeah, the passive WDM phone. But in case of uh, data transmission you know, between the uh, stations. Uh, definitely they are using DWDM, which is active WDM system. I, I heard that uh, this uh, vendor, uh, 5G vendor already uh, developed the, the standing alone 5G equipment, uh, but uh, due to the, some other reasons, you know, the operators hesitate to deploy uh, the pipe, I mean, the standing alone 5G network. Probably it will take time. So I cannot say next year. Yeah. Okay, so I think we are already, you know, behind the schedule. Yeah. Also, the next uh, presentation was uh, waiting. Yeah. Uh, that's why. Uh, if there is any more questions, I think the our audience can send it to the the ECOC, yeah, the moderators, and then they can send it to us later on, and then we'll answer all of them. <laughs> 